Hello and welcome. You're watching Boxing Backstage presented by Red Corner Sports Promotions. This is where we decode all the showdowns from across the world of boxing and of course look ahead to some very interesting and mouth-watering encounters too. This is in fact your one-stop destination for all the analysis and everything connected to the world of boxing. Hi, I'm Rupa Ramani and of course joining me here today on this very special episode is someone special from Bangkok. He's of course part of the media team of the WBC Asian Boxing Council and of course also a fight sports commentator for WP Boxing. Please put together a, a warm welcome for Joseph Gwilt. All right, the matchup then we're looking forward to Anthony Joshua versus Kubrat Polev. That's on 12th December in London. Um, AJ versus Cobra, this is going to be exciting. This is another big mouth-watering encounter that we're looking forward to. Um, just th let's talk about Anthony first uh, up, Joe. Um, what impresses you most about um, a contestant like Anthony? Anthony, um, as he was coming up through, aggressive, strong, moving forward, uh, the physique of the pure athleticism of the man. We saw what he called Joseph Parker. He decided he didn't want to engage and he could box off the back foot. Hmm. When we come up to the Ruiz fight and the, the loss, but it was in the rematch, we thought that he could box off the back foot. But my thing that is impressing me at the moment about AJ is hmm. and his ground and box. He can push forward and finish. He has the power. And if he decides to, he can box off the back foot and extremely light on his feet for such a big man as well. So my, what impresses me is his game is evolving and he's got, he, he isn't a plan A fighter now. I've seen three different styles from him. I see him being able to be the aggressor and attack and knock someone out. I've seen him be able to box and break someone down. You've seen him be able to box off the back foot and win on points. And that's the thing that is growing with him and impressing me most of all and evolving oh, we're the, right we're gonna get into the banter that, that these two had in a bit but before that just a bit about Pulev as well touching 40 Bulgarian um experience is something that he's got on his side again is this gonna is the age factor gonna have some sort of an impact in this encounter it's the not necessarily the age factor but it's what he's been doing in the last few years, not particularly much. Since the, um, he's had good fights with Chisera, Peter Johnson, Fury. His last fight was Booker last year. This is the Klitschko knockout. He, he's not consistently been fighting the best. Uh, he was supposed to be fighting Joshua, that he was the original opponent before yes. he pulled out and Ruiz came in in a massive upset in New York. So this fight was happened, supposed to happen once and then before the pandemic twice and this is the third time. Yes, I think age will be a little bit of a factor. Level of competition over the last few years will be a little bit of a factor. But the main factor for me is AJ. Uh, yeah, he had his lots. He is not going to make the same mistake again. He has come out wow. fully focused. There is no way he's letting this fight slip and looking towards the unification match. Although there's talk about it, maybe he was looking for, towards the unification match before he's... Again, that's what AJ will have learned. He will have learned skills. Will have learned a different mindset. So the major factor in this is AJ. Not what Pulev can bring or can't bring. It's about it's AJ's fight to lose for me. Now Pulev does come with a very good jab, and like you say, he comes with experience, and he comes with uh, he's a big guy as well, at six foot, six foot four and a half, and he's been in there with some good fighters. But I feel it's. Two years ago, he would have had a better chance of this. I just don't think it's the right time for him at all. You're gonna, clearly, you're tilting towards uh, Joshua on this one. Uh, it's, it's, it's obviously evident. Just a bit of, uh, just a last word on the banter that they share. Uh, obviously, uh, there's been a bit of back and forth. Uh, 
he, he said he doesn't have Joshua's tan and that was taken a little out of context. There was apologies, all of that happening. How much do you love the war of words for any such um, uh, much talked of encounter, Joe? Uh, I don't think there was anything particularly wrong in that statement. In fact, it was trying to compliment him. He was, it was yeah. meant to be a compliment, but in the day age, a lot of political correctness. Um, I don't think it's been it's been light-hearted banter, should we say. I don't think there's been any real animosity or real hatred between the two. So it's good to build the fight. Uh, I don't think it needs that much building. The fan base is there. The interest is there from around the world. But uh, a little bit. Pulev's quite a interesting character, should we say. He says some things. He does some things sometimes. Um, I think there was a, an incident with an interviewer um, that got yeah. a lot of attention and some of the things he says got a lot of attention. I think he's a bit more of a joker than anything particularly malicious. Um, but it's I, interesting what... Sorry. No, no, go, go ahead, Joe. It'd be interesting to see what AJ comes in at. Like I said before, the three stars going in for the straight knockout breaking a man down or fighting on the back foot. I don't see him fighting off the back foot for this at all. It's him being a controlled boxer for a few rounds, going through the gears, breaking his man down. Mean six to eight round stoppage. Fantastic. <laughs> we, 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 got, we got you on that one. We got you on that one. And we, yeah. we hold you that on 12th December uh, in London. That's yeah. when that fight and face off will happen. Okay, the fight that we're going to obviously look ahead to is Shakur Stevenson versus Toka Khan. Also, um, that's that's on 12th December. Um, a very young Shakur taking on someone also both of them relatively young. Uh, your thoughts ahead of this uh, particular uh, interesting matchup, Joe? Yeah, uh, Shakur Stevenson kind of coming into this 14 fights. It's easy, 23 years old. It's easy to say, oh, he's a prospect. He's already a world champion. He's just moving up the division. Um, He's being very highly touted. He's a silver At Olympics, uh, yeah. medalist Olympic, who is the highest male placed in the Olympics when Clarissa Shields got the gold in the, for the females. He's moving up the division. Um, he's a very highly skilled boxer. Mm. Mm. I think if he can win go up through the divisions we'll see a great like i say i, I say prospect just because he's so young and so few fights but uh he's already a world champion at this stage his opponent has a couple of losses he's 28 years old he's a strong fighter he'll pose him some problems but i think uh it's a it's a nice introduction fight to the weight limit for Stevenson. You know, Stevenson also a little bit of an interesting backstory a bit. Uh, again, similar, not, I won't pen it on the same breath as Errol, but again, there was this um, incident where he had a misdemeanor battery. He was he was on probation for that for a long time. Yeah. These kind of incidents, how do they change a boxer mentally as well, Joe? How does it, does it, does it steal him to kind of do more and channelize it in a positive manner in the ring, for instance? There's different... Boxers will have different ways of dealing with it. It is going to be hard for boxers. Normally, they come from a certain background, not necessarily a privileged background, and they focus, they find boxing, and they focus on boxing, and all they do is boxing. And then suddenly, they're making money, but they're still on their way up, and they've accumulated money, and they're gradually accumulating fame. And then suddenly, they open their eyes, they have money, fame, spotlights, and from where they're from, it's not particularly easy to deal with. They want to flaunt it, they want to pull off, uh, they, but they're not equipped to deal with the fame, the lights, the money, the attention. And yes, some of them can spiral out of control. They need a good team with them. They need somebody, they need a mentor, they need someone to help them. Um, do they have that in a trainer? Do they have that in a, a role model? Do they have that in a mentor? Wow. Some do and can focus very well. And some don't. Sadly, we've seen fighters, fantastic fighters. Um, Broner, for example, fantastic fighter, mm -hmm. fighter, who had all the skills in the book, but just couldn't quite focus on his job at hand, the one thing. 
Um, All right, but I, I, I know I'm going to put you on a spot here because it's a tough one to call. Shakur versus Toka. Which way do you see this one going? I, I see it going Stevenson's way. I see him as the the better fighter, the better boxer. The the way they want the uh, promotion to go, should we say? You know, he's the, he's the he's the star of the show, and uh, he'll win. I won't make a prediction on how he'll win. Um, but I'd say, I'll say, Stevens will come away with a win. That's all I'll give you on that.